We're confident in the Lord Jesus that he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to perfection until the day of Christ Jesus. And I have the right to feel so about you all because I have you in my heart, all of you, alike in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel as sharers in my joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we can rejoice in the canonization of a new saint which took place this very day. A saint for our times, especially Saint Jose Luis Sanchez del Rio. First I should acknowledge gratefully the website for the Minor Seminary of the Institute of the Incarnate Word, which is named after him, from which I obtained much of the information that follows. Saint Jose Luis was born on March 28, 1913, in the Mexican state of Michoacan. This is the state that is just southeast of Jalisco, which is where the city of Guadalajara is located. As many of you may know, we do have an apostolate there in Guadalajara. The states of Jalisco and Michoacan were the very heart of the Cristero movement during the Cristero Wars. There have been many, many persecutions of the church in Mexico, mostly carried out by Freemasons. But the worst persecutions resulted in the Cristero War of 1926 to 1929. When the Cristero War broke out in December of 1926, Saint Jose Luis was only 13 years old. And yet he begged his mother to allow him to become a Cristero. He said, Never has it been so easy to obtain heaven. I don't want to lose the opportunity. He wrote to General Prudencio Mendoza over and over again, requesting to be admitted as a Cristero. And the general finally gave in and allowed him to become his flag bearer. He eventually became the one to sound the trumpet as well. He told General Mendoza, I know how to do a lot of things, including how to make beans. I should mention that the movie For Greater Glory is not accurate here. They have Saint Jose Luis as being associated directly with the top commander of Coros Dieta, but instead he was under the General Prudencio Mendoza. I mention that simply for the record. Not long after Saint Jose Luis joined the Cristeros, he was in a battle in which the General's force was killed. Saint Jose Luis insisted to the General that he take his own horse saying that the general was far more important than himself. It was in this way that Saint Jose Luis was captured. He said, you're going to take me, but I don't surrender. The first thing the federal forces did was to force him to watch the execution of another man, thinking that this would intimidate him into submission. In fact, Just the opposite happened. Saint Jose Luis positively encouraged the man who went on to die a martyr's death for the Catholic faith. So then Saint Jose Luis was taken back, taken to be held in a church which had been turned into a jail. And they also kept fighting roosters there. When Saint Jose Luis saw them, said, this is not a barnyard, and he proceeded to kill the chickens. Now, if you think about it, this act itself was very brave, because these were mean, trained fighting cocks that killed each other, and so they were capable of causing very serious injury to our saint. Now, this action by him infuriated the government official so much that for this he wanted Saint Jose Luis to be put to death. He was allowed to write a letter to his family and in it he says the following, I'm resigned to do the will of God 
I die happy because I die beside our Lord. Do not afflict yourselves because of my death, since to die for God gives me joy. They flayed his feet. They stripped the skin from the bottom of his feet and then made him walk to the cemetery where he was to be executed. And all along the way, he continued to say, Viva Cristo Rey, Viva la Virgen de Guadalupe. And before he was killed, he said to his executioners, I forgive all of you, since we are all Christians. We'll see each other in heaven. I want you all to repent. The soldiers still tried to get him to apostatize and to say death to Christ the King, but he would only say in reply, Viva Cristo Rey. Then they shot him several times and struck him in the head, and so he had a martyr's death for Christ the King and for the Catholic faith. This was on February 2nd, 1928, Candlemas Day. He was only 14 years old. In 2005, he was beatified by Pope Benedict XVI. And as I mentioned earlier, he was canonized today. What impresses me the most is, is his fearlessness in the face of evil and his absolutely unwavering commitment to Christ. As our gospel today says, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, but render unto God the things that are God's. Sometimes maybe we waver because we are afraid, but our Lord himself tells us not to be afraid of those who can kill the body, but have nothing further that they can do. This evil world is full of pretensions and illusions. Don't be afraid of them. Stand up for them. Saint Jose Luis Sanchez del Rio, pray for us. Viva Cristo Rey. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.